Iowa is about to become the home of a new political record in America. Sitting Governor Terry Branstad, the Republican, is about to cross the threshold that hasn't been crossed in more than 200 years. He'll be the longest serving governor in American history when he reaches the 21 year mark next week. Governor Branstad, welcome to the Wall Street Journal. Great to be with you. Thank you. We'd like to talk a little bit about what it takes to serve the citizens of Iowa for such a long period of time. What are the political pitfalls and what are the political wins that you've had that have kept you uh, going all these years? Well, first of all, I think you need to be a hard worker, very conscientious, stay in touch with your constituents and not afraid to make the tough decisions uh, to lead the state to economic prosperity. I came in as governor in a very difficult time, farm crisis in the 1980s. My first term, we closed 38 banks and land values dropped 63%. But I focused on diversifying the economy and revitalizing agriculture, bringing more jobs to the state, eventually uh, revitalizing manufacturing, things that would really make Iowa a more diversified and, and more competitive state. We were dependent on imported uh, fossil fuels. Today, we produce more ethanol than we consume in gasoline. We have become a leader in renewable energy. So I'm real proud to have been the governor that's led the effort that strengthened Iowa's economy and made it more diversified. And uh, I go to every county every year, I've stay heard in you touch say with that. the people you, you of Iowa. You just finished, you got to the 99 counties again this year, right? That's right. Do you feel that in this, uh, this political uh, cycle here, as the primaries coming up in Iowa really soon, that there are particular hot button issues that the Iowans will want a candidate to address? Well, the caucuses are coming up February 1st. And I do advise the candidates come to Iowa early and often, go to all 99 counties, listen to the people, answer their questions, show them what you're going to do to lead this country. Look at the contrast between what Franklin Roosevelt did after the attack on Pearl Harbor and how he rallied Americans of every political persuasion and brought the country together. George W. Bush did that after the attack against the Twin Towers here in New York. But uh, President Obama failed to do that. He didn't offer any new policies. And he, and he really went back to a very divisive issue, and that is the whole idea of uh, gun regulations. And that's not a way to unite the American people. I think really we need a leader that will unite the country, uh, bring all the parties together, and recognize we have a huge external threat from ISIS and from Islamic radicals that uh, threatened uh, not only our country, but threatened the whole uh, uh, peace and stability in the world. So one of the boldest responses to that threat uh, in this election cycle came just this week from Donald Trump, who said, until we know more about what's going on, we need to stop all Muslims from coming into this country. Did you have thoughts about how that plays in Iowa and, and your well, politics? I, obviously, I think a lot of people are very frustrated by the lack of leadership. Uh, but I think that's too simplistic an answer. I, I, I have reservations. The administration won't share with us who these people are or who they're being placed with. And we have fear for the safety of our people. You're talking that now about the Syrian refugees. I'm talking about the Syrian refugees. And I'm among 26 governors that have said, we want to pause in this. I think we just have to do a much better job of assuring the safety of our citizens. And, and I don't feel that uh, uh, this administration has taken it seriously. What do you think in regards to situations like San Bernardino uh, needs to be done differently at the local and state law enforcement level that maybe doesn't involve the federal government? Well, certainly uh, the neighbors that saw these suspicious activities should not have been afraid uh, of, of uh, contacting the police and, and having it investigated. We need to encourage the citizens to be very watchful and to report any suspicious situation. Also, you get into the question of how did the, the wife get here from a foreign country? We know that we have people traveling to these countries where ISIS is strong today and where they're indoctrinating people and then coming back to our country as they have to France and other countries, well, that's a very dangerous situation. In Iowa this year, when heading into the primary, do you think economic issues or these national security issues that we've been talking about are the preeminent issue for Iowan voters? Well, our caucus, which is gonna be held on February 1, Generally, the economic issues would be the primary issue. But because of the tremendous threat we see, I think the national security issues are going to play an even more prominent role. Uh, I think things like uh, renewable fuel standard and the administration's failure to 
maintain a robust renewable fuel standard. It's hurt our farmers, it's cost us jobs. Uh, that's an issue. Uh, I think there's concern about the national debt approaching $19 trillion. It's unaffordable, unsustainable, and that's true with Obamacare as well. So there's a number of issues, but right now, because of what's happened in the world and what's happened here in America, I think uh, national security and protecting the safety of our citizens is becoming a very prominent issue in this election. So of all the candidates in your party that are coming to Iowa for that February 1st primary, do you have a sense of any of them with a message that's resonating more than the others? Well, I think different candidates appear, appeal to different people, and Iowans take their responsibility very seriously. Uh, but I've also remained neutral because I want people to feel welcome. I want them to know that uh, uh, it's a level playing field. I, I, I think they should work hard right up through February 1st. I think Republican turnout this year will be the biggest in history of the Iowa caucuses. Well, that's good political advice, and uh, we'll see how many, uh, uh, how many of the candidates can follow your advice and follow your lead and win the, win the hearts of Iowans. I'd like to thank you very much for joining us.